Hey everybody, welcome back to the Flatirons Tuning Question of the Week. This week our question comes from YouTube commenter K Changuido who wants to know about the coolant expansion tank and if you can remove it. We have a couple different things we call the expansion tank, so why don't we talk about both? Basically, this is we call this the uh, auxiliary coolant tank, but it couldn't be referred to as an expansion tank, and then there is the kind of the overflow tank which sits next to the radiator, which could also be referred to as the expansion tank. They're both important components of the cooling system, so we wanted to address both of them just to make sure that we had this question covered because these, both of these items are often overlooked as far as uh, how important they are to the cooling system. So let's talk about the auxiliary tank first. Sure. So the auxiliary tank, this, uh, some variant of this is what you see that sits on basically just on top of the uh, intake manifold right above the turbo and it has your upper radiator cap on it. Um, the, the key, the, the obvious function that this serves is it's the high point of the cooling system. That's why the radiator cap is on there. And with a Subaru, burping the air out of the cooling system is more difficult, more complicated than on most cars. Maybe that's another topic for another question of the week. But the, the best practice would be to, to burp, uh, basically remove this upper radiator cap and burp the air out with the use of something like a nose spell funnel. That would be the best practice. Um, and you need to use the high point of the cooling system to, to burp the coolant. So that's why having this as the high point is so important. The other functionality of it that's interesting is um, it, it helps the turbo cool down. So the turbo sits just below this and basically one of the coolant lines from the turbo connects directly to the auxiliary tank. And what that does is it lets coolant continue to cycle around the turbo even after the cars turn off uh, and the water pump isn't moving anymore. So now, Nigel, you've been in the game for a little while, you probably remember something called a turbo timer. Oh yeah. Fun little device where you, you turn your ignition off and this would interrupt that signal and let the engine run for like 30 seconds before the engine really turned off. And the idea is, is that that gives the turbo time to spin down and still feed oil and coolant to the turbo or specifically in the case of an oil cooled turbo, just oil, so that it could cool down, spin down before you actually stop the flow of fresh fluids to it. Subaru, uh, started including this auxiliary tank with the turbo car is because they realized, well, if, if, even if you just turn the car off, this lets that coolant continue to cycle. The, the flow of the coolant to the turbo comes from the cylinder head to the turbo and then into this tank. And then so having basically that uh, convection flow just helps the turbo cool down um, even if the, the water pump isn't running. So it, it's really important as a high point and just to kind of help the turbo cool down as well. So it seems like it's pretty important. Um, what would happen if you did remove it and you know, can you? Yeah, I, I, it's, because it's the high point in the system, I, I really would not recommend removing it. They're, like a Killer Bee makes one of these that's smaller, so you have maybe better placement options. But even if you're going to move it around, it's you really want it to be the high point in the system. If you would remove it altogether, now you have this turbo that's sitting pretty high up in, in the engine bay and your radiator, which is lower. And so that means that basically you're not going to be able to burp the cooling system from the high point of the system and that's going to make it a lot more challenging to get all of the air out. Okay, so let's move on to the So, so the expansion tank. All right, that, I'm actually going to say that that is the, beyond the radiator cap, that is the most important piece of the cooling system and, and it is very often disregarded and not thought very much of. I mean, heck, I've seen people put, oh, I don't know, Mountain Dew bottles, Gatorade bottles is, is their overflow tank. Yeah, no, 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 one, no, one, no one here though, no one on this mm -hmm. podcast. Uh, but it really is critically important, and, and let me show you why. So, so this sits next to your radiator, and there's a hose that goes down mostly to the bottom, and you got these two marks, the, the low and the high, or the cold and the hot. What this does is it basically gives the cooling, coolant in the cooling system a place to go when it, it warms up and gets up to normal operating temperature. So ideally you'd have it the cold level set at the low, and then what should happen once, it reach, once your engine reaches full normal operating temperature is it would be pretty much at the full or hot mark. Then, when everything cools off, the coolant's going to shrink again. It's going to get pulled back into the engine and it will go back down to the low mark. That movement from the cold mark to the hot mark and back to the cold mark, that is the critical indicator of a cooling system that is functioning properly. If you're not seeing that movement, that repetitive movement from cold to hot, 
that is, a, that is a key indicator that you have some kind of a leak in the cooling system that's letting air in instead of pulling all the coolant back in. If that happens one, even one time where you pull air into the system, your cooling system is compromised a bit and usually it's just going to degrade from there. So if nothing else, that system is, or this bottle is key to indicate that your cooling system is working properly. But beyond that, you have to always make sure that there is coolant in this, in this tank or in this bottle to go back into the engine when it cools down. A long time ago, we were doing track days, we were doing some tech inspections, and I can't tell you the number of people that, that basically were getting ready to go on track and had an empty uh, expansion, expansion tank or overflow tank. Your, your engine is going to warm up and it's going to put some coolant in there, but when it cools down, the, the hose is not going to be able to get every drop of coolant back in to the cooling system. So that means if you can't pull in coolant, it's going to pull in air. And then once again, if you've done that, now the cooling system is compromised and it's just going to be a degrading process from that point on. So, so you really want to, to be able to watch the, the hot and cold levels move and always make sure that there's plenty of coolant at the bottom of the, of the, the bottle or the tank or whatever so that the engine can pull it in when it cools off. So this full line is pretty low on the bottle. What happens if it overflows? Generally, if it overflows, that's a big indicator that you've got a big problem. Um, but ironically, if it gets kind of high but it doesn't overflow, you probably still have a pretty big problem that needs to be dealt with. Um, I've seen it, in fact, we've even run into it a couple of times uh, when we were first learning all of this with the Pikes Peak car, that if it gets really high, close to the top, but not overflow, you think, well, I mean, it's, it's still just staying right underneath the cap, it's probably okay. Turns out that's not the case. Um, there's a little detail on the back here that for some reason Subaru put a little hole on the back right behind the cap that is hidden basically right up against the radiator. So if your coolant, if the expansion tank is filling up but not quite getting to the cap, you are actually probably overflowing it and dribbling coolant down the back in, in a place where you probably wouldn't see unless you see the puddle on the ground um, and, as, as the car gets hot. And so you're, you're, again, you're losing coolant, you're probably letting some air in, that sort of thing. So yeah, even, even if you're getting if you're, you should have an idea where your coolant's hot mark is, and if you start seeing the coolant creep above that, I mean, that can indicate, you know, a, an issue with the cooling system or, like, you know, head gaskets. If, head ga if you had a head gasket failure and starting to move combustion gas into the cooling system, oftentimes you start moving a lot of coolant into the overflow. Thanks, everybody, for checking out Question of the Week. Remember, we do these every week, and you can submit your questions via Instagram or on the comments below. Thanks very much for watching, we really appreciate it, and as always, stay tuned.